for those of you uh, unfamiliar, uh, my name is Kevin Smith. This is my friend Scott Mosier, my producer. Hello. We make movies. We didn't make this one, much to my chagrin and much to my great relief. Um, we're going to do a commentary for Roadhouse, the uh, Silver Swayze, Rowdy, Roddy Harrington classic. Um, and chiefly, uh, the whole thing came about because we talked about Roadhouse a little bit on our Clerks 10 DVD. We did. We were talking about Jeff Healy. And we t and, and, and Roadhouse. In one of the intros yeah. to something, we just went on for you know, a good four or five minutes or something about Roadhouse. And then uh, the good folks at Sony slash MGM slash all those other companies that make up the Sony Empire, Columbia TriStar, that kind of thing, uh, said, hey, you want to do a commentary track for Roadhouse? And we were like, uh, all right. Absolutely. Yeah, because we've, I'm sure we've got stuff to say. That dude who just walked up, Kevin Teague, He's a dude who you might remember from such films as Eight Men Out. Eight Men Out, I do with remember. John Sayles. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot of paper shuffling here because we've <laughs> printed up everything we could possibly need to know about Roadhouse. And we'll be going over it with you all today as we talk about this modern day classic Roadhouse. Now, Kevin Teague, aside from being in Eight Men Out, uh, was in. Um, well, he'd done a lot of TV. He was in Jade. I, I, I guess it's a big leap from Eight Men Out to Jade. School Ties with a dude we know. Yeah. Better Off Dead. Oh, class. Class picture. Mate Juan, too. Another sales picture. He's a character actor. You've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Uh, I always liked the guy. Um, and in this picture, he's a saying the role of, well, let's see. <laughs> Kevin Teague plays. Well, he's the dude who owns the bar. He's yeah. he's come a looking. He's Frank Tillman, owner of the Double Deuce. He's the guy who's looking for Dalton. And there he is, the Swayze dog himself, Patrick Swayze, playing Dalton. A lot of people thought that Dalton didn't have uh, a last name, thought it was like Madonna or Cher, but really his name is James Dalton. And uh, notice how zen he is. See, there's a fight breaking out. Swayze uh, doesn't come over and start knocking heads together just the slow approach pimps what he needs to say probably like uh, nobody puts baby in a corner and then uh he lets his 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 uh, dudes his lackeys handle it hey, with just a nod, nod. The, with the nod no less uh dalton's character in the movie as we'll come to learn was a an my i believe it was myu philosophy uh major he Got was a doctorate in philosophy yeah um so he, he's a dude that knows a lot about the nature of man and the nature of kicking man's ass. Now, you saw this movie in the theater. I did. It was my graduating, uh, I graduated in 89. This Look, is your gift to yourself? Yeah, this is my, uh, you graduated, Scott. Go see Roadhouse. Did your hair look like that? Um, not, not, uh, not as good as that. I was never as 80s as those guys were. They're achieving like a real look. Well, those, I mean, these dudes are, they're living in the 80s, man. This is 80, so if it came out in 89, 89 it was probably made somewhere around 88, 89. Yeah. Uh, those, I mean, that's, this is this is it. This is the, the swan song of the 80s, of this, the go-go 80s. I, I, I believe this was sort of like the very, this took every, every element of the 80s and threw it into one movie and kind of closed the door on the 80s. If you were uh, sewing your arm up in a room, mm -hmm. would you lock the door? As the bouncer, as the dude who's just, I mean, obviously somebody didn't no, like you enough I, to cut you. Because if I was sewing my own arm up without anesthetic, I wouldn't mind somebody walking in. <laughs> you want somebody to pimp that shit because then they're scared of you. Because they're like, wow, look at you, hardcore. Yeah, but just... if you were in a room with your shirt off and some dude creeps in, gives you that smile, wouldn't you think he was trying to blow you? Yeah, but I'm not scared. Sweet. You're not scared. You gotta. You have to become... You have to think that you're that guy. Like you saw when he got cut, he didn't even react to it. That's true. He, he, he like you're not scared. He's so underacted it. I I didn't even notice he got cut. See, you missed the whole thing. Like you're that dude. You're not scared of anybody, especially some old dude with a bolo Swayze coming Dalton. in. It's Dalton, not yeah. me, because I'm scared Dalton. of everything. If you're Dalton, look at him. He's sewing it up like he's like he's men in a shirt. He, and you're not scared of this guy, regardless of his intentions, sexual take, or whatnot. You can rip his throat out if needs yeah. be. 
I don't know, man. He's not I mean, afraid of a room full of motherfuckers. What, you think he's going to fucking bat an eye at this old timer? I, I might, dude. You, it's it's the old timers you got to be careful <laughs> of. scared of the sexual yeah. predator? <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. I mean, I was, let's see, this came out in 89, so I was about 18, 19 when I saw this. But but let's say I was a 12-year-old Dalton sitting in that room <laughs> sewing up my arm my arm scar and this dude pimps in. I, I would I would be afraid. I, you know, I, I bet you 12-year-old Dalton was sewing up his own wounds at 12. Some dude walks into a room when your shirt's off and he's like, I want you to come with me. Here's a plane ticket. That doesn't occur to you as like predatory in any sort of way? Well, we don't live his life, you no. know? We don't, we, you don't have, I mean, you don't, that's a common occurrence for him. People are coming looking for him. Happens all the time. Yeah. Look at him. See? God, that dude had great hair. What do you think? Sexiest uh, man alive, 1991, 91? I believe, two years after this. So this isn't even the height of his sexual powers. Two years later. That's when people when, were when really he keyed would, in. Yeah. <laughs> people were like, wow, that was Swayze. We had no idea. You know, this was a movie that when it came out, um, it did like $30 million in box office, which I think is great, but I don't know what they spent on the movie to get. That, that, to, dude, that dude was in weird science. Totally. He's just like. That old guy? He's the dude that said, in the family, Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, he is a staple of the '80s. Um, he uh, so so Swayze. Um, this is where he reveals the car. He I tried. mean, do you, do you really make enough money being a bouncer to buy? Once again, if you're Swayze, you're, you're, you got to make like you got to take him out of this. You're making him a common man. He is not. He is the Uber bouncer. He's a guy who's who's turned it into uh, you know tape player. He's the guy who's turned it into literally. Like, your imagination, do you? Yeah, really like, like a tape player. This dates that movie big time. It does date. It's also like this movie. Like you know, you think about all the modern conventions that we're stuck li- seeing all the time in movies. Like I was like cell phones. Mm. Like you know, we're not going to see a cell phone in this movie. If we do, it's going to be about ninety-six feet. Yeah, long. it'll be the size it'll of the m- car. <laughs> pretty the- massive. They're written by a guy named David Lee uh, Henry and Hillary Henkin. David Lee Henry. Um, was a dude who who wrote very few films. He wrote Out for Justice. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote Roadhouse. He wrote Eight Million Ways to Die, which coincidentally was Hal Ashby's last the his actual swan film, song, his yeah. swan song. Um, he wrote The Evil That Men Do, which I believe was a Bronson flick. Mm-hmm. Out for Justice, of course, was a Steven Seagal picture. Eight Million Ways to Die had Jeff Bridges and and Roseanne Arquette in it. But isn't that weird? Hal Ashby's last picture. But uh, but he also he I believe he's <laughs> dude without his shirt on. <laughs> Another dude. <laughs> well, he's dancing. A dude well, that's dancing. What, that's why this place needs Dalton's help because they can't keep, a dress code. Yeah, <laughs> dudes can't keep their shirts on. He also wrote it with Hillary Hankin, who was a chick who also didn't write that much, but she wrote she co-wrote Wag the Dog with David Mamet, which I thought wow, was kind of interesting. There you go. And Romeo is bleeding. Um. If you're if you're David Lee Henry and Hillary Hankin, are you proud of this movie, or are you just like, yeah, it's something you I did for You gotta be proud of check. all your children. I think so, but do you think there's a secret shame in any of it? Like, do you think they watch this movie and they're like, they didn't get it? <laughs> uh, I don't. You know, I mean, I think if somebody if somebody at that time, mm-hmm. 1987, 1988, calls you up and says, okay, we want to write a modern western. Um. With it is it, kind of a modern. It Western. is a modern Western. If you notice, all the names in it are from taken from, right from. Yeah, I mean Dalton later so on. So here's the later this, on you'll meet Cat's name, Wade and Brad Wesley. Those are Western names. Even the chicks fight. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Look at that little Superman curl, man. But anyways, he's missed the, it. He could have been Superman. See, there's a dude. With his shirt. <laughs> it's kind of a gay bar they want him to come and, and <laughs> it's patrol. Kind of a, um, this is. I always found it very strange, though, that like they like the house band, but they throw beer bottles at them as well. <laughs> like the way to show your affection, kind of like a five-year-old uh, boy has affection for a five-year-old girl and pulls her pigtails yeah, yeah, yeah. or hair. I don't even know if anyone does a pigtails anymore. Is they just about... whip fucking bottles at these cats, and the one dude is blind. Like that's hateful. Look at that thing. <laughs> Where is the... that guy? <laughs> Look at him. He's working those eyebrows like he's trying to. That's pretty amazing. So you're that dude, the dude who gets to hit on the chick. Yeah. Pretty, you know, pretty good part in the movie. Yeah. 
I wonder if he was a local. Whoa. Oh, whoa. whoa there there it is. There it is. See, now Dalton's surveying all this because he realizes this is no way to bounce. You this is not how you run a club. No, you don't grab people and beat the shit out of them, throw them around and stuff like that. There's another way to do it. But it is a modern Western in that there's a... He comes in to do a job. He doesn't want to get involved in the town politics. You know, it's a classic sort of Western story. But you're, you know, it's that time. It's 1980 something, and you're charged. You're, you're, you're offered to write this story, and these people, I think, took all the elements, you know, of the time uh -huh. and sort of crammed it into a movie. They took what was available to them do you and modernize a Western. I mean, I don't think this will ever. You know, I think they could be proud. Um, kind of like Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> Without do you think the unicorn. Uh, without the unicorn? Do you think? Uh, do you remember this chick? I do. Her name's Catherine Wilhoy. What do you recognize her from? Well, I remember her recently from uh, Lorenzo's Oil. Okay, I remember her going way the fart back on cable when I was a kid to a little picture that you two may remember with Phoebe Cates, and that picture was called Private School. <sighs> It was I one of the teen yes. titty flicks that was huge on cable when I was a kid, when I was first getting into that masturbatory period. And uh, there's a shot in the movie where that purports to show Phoebe Cates' ass, and you think it might be real, but unlike Fast Times Ridgemont High, where you can tell it's her boobs because her face is attached, yeah, you never is, really you quite sure. Catherine Wilhoyt didn't show her. Kathleen Wilhoyt didn't show her ass. But this chick uh, went on to do some stuff, man. She's released two albums. Isn't that weird? She might sing in this also movie. Also an accomplished musician. She does sing in this movie. Very good memory. Wow. She's got two widely it's released albums. Pitch, <laughs> pitch like a girl in Sheila. Sure <laughs> they, they, uh, yeah, that's, well, that's why they need to clean the joint up. you got to get dudes like that out of there. Jeff Healy, who's a dude we did talk about quite a bit on that. Look, there it is, man. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, blind dude. Pitch is a bottle at the motherfucker, and he is blind. He can't see that coming. I. That's a rowdy group. Oh, that, this bar c c clearly needs to be cleaned. But up. now, like as a as a guy who's, who, who in 1989 I was a high school <laughs> senior, the rest of the band just like God, they threw another <laughs> bottle. Look at him conspiring to play a joke on the on on Jeff Healy because yeah. he can't see. Wow, totally. Movie. That's your bandmates right there. <laughs> yeah, they're just like we're in. What do you want to do? <laughs> Why, why do you think he's looking at him? <laughs> it's almost like he's going to recognize him. Jeff Healy's been blind since he was age one, sir. Age one. I wonder if he has a, a moment like a, like from when he was one that he remembers. That he remembers, a, that he has any sort of context. Saw, yeah. I don't remember anything from age one, so it'd be tough. Since nobody here from the movie or Jeff Healy is <laughs> not here. We'll take a shot in the dark. Um, I mean, if you were a one-year-old, and let's say, like if I was one... Or, and I lost my sight, like, later on. And somebody was like, you know what red is? And I'm like, fuck no. And they're like, red, like Ronald McDonald's hair. Then I might make the connection. Gotcha. Because, like, I'm sure I'd remember something like clown with hamburgers. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that can come in handy, useful. Every time you see a clown, you're looking for a burger. But uh, he, he took up guitar playing at age three. Wow. After, you know, once the sight was gone, I guess Age he, three, well, I don't remember. What were you doing at age three? I took up my own poop. <laughs> Probably <laughs> fl <laughs> flinging around like a chip. I didn't take up a guitar. This dude anything, did something constructive. This of. dude was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Look, my God. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been in many bars in my life, but oh, I guess he's a pimp, right? No, I think he's proud of his... We don't have that. I think he's proud of his wives, his wife, his girlfriends. Um, I think he's a pimp. I, I, I probably be useful. I think to he's baiting. Throw on the headphones, but he's proud of his new fake, her new fake boobs. I think part of the problem with the bar. No, he's total pimp, sir. He's trying to sell the. Ch well, come on. No, no, no. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No. Oh, he's you not think a it's he's, it's a husband proud of the fake boobs? Yeah. So is he then going to get outraged? At, yeah. Look at him. See, he grabbed subtle one turn. too many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, You're that's right. why you that's why you don't invite that kind of thing. Never invite another man over to grab your your legs. I, I think it's really unfair to turn on a dude after you've been like, "Why don't you rub these?" Look, he gets mad. This now bar you, needs to be cleaned up. This, See that dude right there? Big yeah. dude flannel shirt yeah he played uh he was in batman returns he played uh as credited as fat clown wow he's the one that says you missed and then batman ah. he shoots the thing into the wall he's holding michelle pfeiffer with a little shock thing gotcha uh and then he, he gets knocked out he was the fat clown in that movie there's only one so i will say this this movie has got to be recognized as having employed 
literally hundreds of stunt people. Totally. Look at there's bottles. There's look at that. Non-stop. I don't know if he's a stunt guy. I'm not gonna count him. On average, you're talking about like probably they got 40, 50 guys. Most of the extras, I bet you, were stunt guys. Could you imagine it's 1988 and you hear like, hey, there's gonna be this movie Roadhouse. But I think they need a few stunt people. And, and then it turns out everyone you know in the stunt business is working on this movie. It'd be a hell and of Jeff Healy's there. And Jeff Healy's there. And uh oh, the breakaway bottles, the brawls. I, I will always be in awe of, of stunt people. How like it, it's very easy to to kind of get hurt, but they never seem to really. He's definitely a stunt dude. They wow. never seem to really get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like Chris Reeves on a horse jumps over a bush. You know, paraplegic. This dude got thrown over a fucking bar, and he's probably still walking around today. Well, there, I mean, there's, there's, you know. You gotta know how to fall. You gotta know how to fall. I mean, there's probably, I, the people might have been injured. We don't know that. Yeah, but you know, you know what? The IMDb would have told us. Like, some it three motherfuckers died making this picture. That, that would stick out. That would be a fact. That would have been worth pop. it. Oh, you think so? Nah, I don't Loss know. of life on something like Roadhouse. Roadhouse, while it only made $30 million theatrically, and uh, it was roundly kind of dropped by the critics, went on to become a, a massive, massive TV cult film because TBS and TNT seemingly run it every week, once a week. Um, and it's it's become an insanely valuable title in the video library, the MGM video library, now the Sony video library, because it, it it's one of these infinitely watchable movies where you can, if you're clicking around on cable and you see it on, you could just snuggle up with it like a like a teddy bear or, or like put it on like a warm sweater you can well it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't demand much no, of you it really doesn't so far he hadn't shown me shit let's see now we're big t auto sales could you imagine um i lost you, my train of thought i got it it doesn't demand much of you is what you're getting at and i, I completely agree it is a movie that just kind of washes over you well, you can just sit down, you're in, you're out, you can go, you know, you, you don't necessarily, you can drop out for a few minutes, make a phone call, go to the bathroom, you can come back, and you're not like, you're not confused. No. You're like, yeah, he's still in charge. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not going to walk out, you're not going to walk back in and not understand the, you know, what the stakes are. I always thought this was a pretty ingenious plan where you, you buy a beater car. The shit car. To bring to work. Because knowing that people are going to hate you, yeah. stab your tires and shit like that. That's the car that you bring to, to work. Extra and then, tires. And, and pack extra tires. And then you leave the good car someplace else where nobody could fuck with it. Well, he's, I mean... He's a forward thinker, Dalton. I mean, and that's the philosophy. I don't actually think those tires... I don't think you would have been able to close the trunk. I'm going to say that that's the first really unbelievable moment of the movie. No, really. You don't I think the fucking like the dude going to feel my my wife's boobs was was unbelievable. Um, not in that particular space. That bar with the guy right. with the one guy without a shirt on, you feel like anything can happen. <laughs> Walk through the door, it's like a gay fantasia. <laughs> it was. Um, this is I, I, the great irony here is that uh, this joint that he's gonna take residence up and he takes residence up in the barn house at this dude's property is right across the the little river or lake or whatever you would call it from the villain will eventually meet ben gazara his yeah um the the sadist who runs the town small oh, yeah. town the guy he goes up against lives across the river right i mean what are the chances that like he's gonna go up against that dude and he lives next door to him too what does it keep your enemies closer? You know. Yeah, but he didn't even know it. He doesn't even in. know. But he, but he's that guy who it's maybe Zen. knows. Yeah. He, knows he knows going in. Knowing. He knows he needs to get close. Jeff Healy. Before we forget about Jeff Healy, although how could we possibly? Because really, he led to us getting this job. Mm -hmm. uh, Canadian. A Canadian. Canadian. Uh, some might say a Canadian institution. Um, but he currently owns a bar in Toronto, 178 Bathurst. It's called. It showcases blues bands. A blues band? Yeah. So Jeff Healy, who was only in one other movie other than Roadhouse, um, the name of which escapes me, but I bet you I can pull it up pretty quickly. No Way Home, about seven years after after Roadhouse. Oh, do you know what? He wasn't even that. He was only in one movie as an actor. That was, he was a composer. He was the composer for No Way Home. Well, he, he was, was a musician one at heart. I don't think you know. 
It wasn't from uh, lack of trying. You think it was a case that they wanted to put angel eyes into the movie, and then they were like, well, why don't you play the guy? I think I mean I mean one he's a blues player it's a it's a roadhouse I mean it all it all fits and make him a character but I mean I I I doubt that he was I don't think he was necessarily pursuing acting uh oh their first moment there he is look I mean could you do you think you could see somebody that from that far away um I'm sure or would you be peering like with squinting your eyes they just look like a blur um but but that was Ben Gazzara Ben the great Ben Gazzara who uh, most people know from Killing of a Chinese Bookie. Mm-hmm. He's a dude who, like, caught wind. He's consistently acted over his entire uh, perf- performing career, and he caught a lot of uh, a second wind, third wind, maybe even fourth wind in the, in the 90s all the way up to the present. That dude doesn't stop working, Ben he's, he's 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 always around. I don't think... Cassavetti's favorite. Cassavetti's. I think that, you know... He's always got not that every movie's a, but he's always he has his moments every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Happiness. Happiness. Um, what else leaps to mind? Just too persuasive. For Do you have that sheet of paper? Uh, yeah, those sheet of papers nearby. Uh, Buffalo sixty six leaps to mind. Yeah. Um, let's see what else they got for. Open hysterical blindness. I love hysterical that. He won, a, he won an award for being in hysterical blindness. Supporting actor. So right award. now he's doing pretty well. Dude's all over the map, man. He works. Classy, classy actor. This, this is a new double deuce. Let's talk uh, Swayze for a second. Dogville. He was in Dogville. Right. The dude's not hard up for work. Um, and I, I bet you this has something to do with it, too, even though most people are like, ah, oh, it's Roadhouse, it's cheese. So many people have seen it, and so many people kind of dig it for what it is that I think when you're thinking about actors, you're like, yeah, I need some guy who looks like Ben Gazzara. Why don't I go for Ben Gazzara? That intensity. Um, Swayze, the Swayze canon. Yeah. I'm trying to narrow down what films would be in the Swayze canon if there was one. Like, what constitutes the strongest or most popular body of his work and and I went through his list of flicks and okay. this is and see if you agree with me I say the Swayze canon even though he was in uh Skate Town USA uh back in in 1979 for me the Sway- Swayze canon really begins with Red Dawn mm-hmm. in 1984 he was in North and South a min- TV miniseries but I ain't counting that then it's Young Blood an awesome the awesome hockey movie piece of cheese about hockey uh, maybe the second greatest hockey movie ever made after uh, Slapshot. Yeah. Maybe third after um, MVP, Most Valuable Primate, The Chimp on Ice Movie, yeah, yeah. whatever that was called. <laughs> okay, so you go Red Dawn, Young Blood. Young Blood's 1986. Then a year later, you've got Dirty Dancing, and that's where he breaks huge. That's where he goes. Playing yeah. Johnny Castle. Mm-hmm. Um then he had two clunkers after that called Steel Dawn and Tiger Warsaw. And then it was Roadhouse, mm-hmm. um, which even though it didn't fare that well at the box office, I mean, $30 million, I, you know, that's I think $30 hey, million is good. Here. Yeah, totally. We're here right now, so it's got to count we, for something. If, totally. And 89, $30 million bucks in 1989 has got to be like $180 million yeah. in 2006 dollars. Totally. Uh, after that, Next of Kin. Remember Next of Kin? I do. I include that in the canon, although some people I imagine would find that controversial. They might controversial drop it choice. off, but... Uh... But still, that was when he's in his heyday. That's his his. That's the predecessor to Ghost, yes. which is probably the most. I, would you? Which would you say is the most popular? Uh, Dirty Dancing or Ghost in the Swayze canon? I don't know. I Those think are they, two they're, huge they're, fucking yeah. movies. Like you know, if you're lucky, you're in one fucking huge movie as an actor. That dude was in fucking two. I gotta maybe say that Dirty Dancing has to be number one. That that's think the so? one that like over time will sort of. It's the one people, more people see, I mean, Ghost was a massive phenomenon when it, it was, was out. But Huge. I think more people still remember Dirty Dancing I think that, over Ghost. That may be the one also that people are picking up, you know, more as it goes along. That could be like new audiences are seeing Swayze there for the first time as opposed to Ghost. Strange. Yeah, I would If I was a betting man back in the day, I would have bet, I would have bet Ghost. But I think you're right, Dirty Dancing. I also included in the Swayze can in his appearance in that Saturday Night Live sketch where he played the Chippendale dancer with uh, with uh, Chris, Chris Farley. Because that is kind of classic. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of Swayze at, at his height as far as I'm concerned. Is she? 
<laughs> and then I, I say that the curve ends with point break. Wow, you're cutting them off there. That's, yeah, 91, because it was still a somewhat popular movie um, with Keanu and whatnot. Um, and uh, then after that, everything, like City of Joy, remember that was his, his classy yeah. bid where he was you know, working out. in India or somewhere like that. And uh, it didn't really pan out. And then... Then you got father. Honorable mention to Tu Wong Fu. Tu Wong Fu for playing a chick, sure, a cross dresser, but didn't really break out. Tu Wong Fu no. didn't really light his career on fire. I mean, you know, props for being in Donnie Darko, of course. Mm hmm. What about, uh, wasn't he in. Um, he played the Alan Outsiders? Quarter. He played Alan Quarterman in a, a TV version of King Solomon's Mines. Yes. He was definitely in the Outsiders, but I would not include that as part of the Swayze canon because it's too much of a ensemble, ensemble piece. Yeah. And also Outsiders in nineteen eighty three. Um some might say Uncommon Valor, where they had to go free, you know, the I'll tell you, I, 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 yeah. I wouldn't include that in the canon. For me the canon begins with Red Dawn, even though that too is an ensemble piece because he was a big part of it. He's a dude that forces the kid to piss in the yeah, the, absolutely. Uh, well, the, I think if you're going to include Red Dawn... What, are the, what was that thing called the, in the car? Canteen. Radiator. Radiator. Canteen. <laughs> forces <laughs> him to piss in the canteen drink it. <laughs> yeah, he forces him to piss in the radiator so they get, they get the truck going and whatnot. Um, but that, for me, it begins But if with you're going to include Red Dawn, which is not psalm, then you have to... Then I think you do have to go back to the Outsiders. you got to throw well, it then in I'm there. Willing, then I'm willing to let Red Dawn go because I, I, I cannot include the Outsiders as part of it. He's a small part of the Outsiders. Very small. Red Dawn, he's a big part. But it's still, like, you'd have to say, like, it was the outsider was, you kind of have to count, because you'd have to say that that was his, uh, it was a Coppola movie. It's like, like, you know, he was validated by the film community by being involved in that. So I think you have to include it. Um, that The bartender? Yeah. John Doe from that band X. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Made a career for himself as an actor after X. Everyone's impressed with with Dalton's act. Even the blind guy can see how yeah, good he Dalton can feel. is. Yeah, he feel. He knows that um, he's making his mark he's not, already. He's not getting hit with any fucking shards of glass. Wow, anymore, look at so. that hair. Oh, yeah. See, this movie did kind of have it all. It had ass kicking. It had fucking nudity. <laughs> look at that dude. Why does the girl have clothes on? I don't know. Dude? But, uh, <laughs> I get totally. I don't know, but it is kind of strange considering that. Uh, we've probably seen more male flesh in this movie than than chick flesh. Like, oh, yeah. there's all these loving shots of Dalton with his shirt off. There was the dude dancing in the bar with his shirt off, and then this chick has her dress kind of hiked up and and her top pulled down. But the, the other uh, bartender's is like, I'm just taking all my clothes off to get this done, <laughs> like for a quickie. <laughs> You know, it's like, hold on, I'm not ready. And he has to completely disrobe. And then he's like, okay, now I'm ready for sex. <laughs> now, I didn't hear what he said, but I think that, uh, I don't, I think Dalton frowns upon, um, well, not on company time. No. And probably not with, uh, uh, uh somebody who patroned the bar. Was, that, was it a patron or was it? I remember this moment because he's going after him for till tapping. Ah. For taking money out of the register. And then they don't take too kindly that. And he's going to shit can this dude. Did we miss the moment it takes? I was talking to Brian Johnson, a friend of ours, yesterday, and he remembered in this movie that like there is a moment where the guy takes from the till, and he says that he's he's looking around so suspiciously. <laughs> and he said it was a, his favorite part of the movie. Yeah, the that's, shout that's out there early. Was like that's early, early on in the picture. That's because when Dalton was just watching when he's the whole room, he yeah, watched he, him. he peeped that out. So now here's where you find out why the dude buys a separate car. Because uh, as he leaves the place at night, he's going to see that his car has been fucking attacked. Mercilessly attacked. But don't matter because he's got like 19 spare tires in that trunk. That never-ending trunk. He Look laughs. at him. He, yeah, he just chuckles, it, chuckles it away. Very zen, this dude. Because he knows. All right, I got spares. What do I give a fuck? I'm Dalton. <laughs> I don't even think he goes that far. Um, there's the, where's that, where's that awesome sheet of Dalton facts? I believe he's reading, reading Legends of the Fall. He is, Jim Harrison's Legends of the Fall. He's a reader. Look at this. Uh, he looks across, <laughs> again, with the, he, dude's got vision like Superman. He can see over that, that lake. I, um, I, I remember seeing 
this movie and and going wow is that what happens when you get a little money you can have crazy parties where people tear their clothes off and go swimming 30 people running towards a pool i i've got a little money you know i've got i've and and i've 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 done pretty well over the course of the last 12 years never had a party like this in never. my life look at that dude i've done that but i was by myself <laughs> i could never get people around me look at that he's and, and there's a is man that guy who's standing so up that yeah he's he's <laughs> like <a> lurch <laughs> he's a giant he's their friend from the circus a dude who's so comfortable with how hardcore he is he's willing to wear a pink bathrobe says a lot about ben gazara um or ben gazara's character i should say <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go on record I, don't I can't credit that to ben himself some dalton facts sir mm-hmm uh Taking a page from the uh, from the uh, the Chuck Norris from the Chuck Norris playbook, Dalton's tears cure cancer. Gosh. It's just too bad he's never cried, ever. Um. Dalton does not sleep, <laughs> sir. He waits. Look once again, more male nudity, and look at the hungry look from her. Wow. I think that's kind of cool because they rarely show that in movies where chicks are well, like women are lusting. Yeah, where like literally drools coming out of her mouth, and she's just like, "I'd eat that ass." You don't really see that that much. <laughs> It's always like the dude playing a horn dog, but I think that's kind of a brave choice. Uh, did you know that uh, the chief export of <laughs> Dalton is pain? That's awesome. The well, chief export of Dalton is pain. If you can see Dalton, he can see you. If you can't see Dalton, you may only be seconds away from death. Um, number six Your favorite. is uh, Dalton has counted to infinity twice. <laughs> that's hard ass. Uh, Dalton does not hunt because the word hunting implies the probability of failure. <laughs> Dalton goes killing. <laughs> Dalton's blood type is AK+, ass-kicking positive. It is compatible only with heavy construction equipment, tanks, and fighter jets. You know, Dalton is one-eighth Cherokee. I didn't know that. This has nothing to do with his ancestry. The man once <laughs> ate a fucking Indian. <laughs> uh, the legend goes on. <laughs> Look at him. That's what happens when you're sadistic. You weave on the road. Uh, did you know that there's no chin behind Dalton's beard? There's only another fist. <laughs> I didn't know that. I think that's genius. Because he doesn't even have he a beard. Have a beard. <laughs> um, Dalton once roundhouse kicked someone so hard that his fist broke the speed of light, went back in time, and killed Amelia Earhart while she was still flying over the Pacific Ocean. He don't care. He's just a care. rich psychotic who's got the town in a stranglehold in his grip. Uh, now, here's the only other uh, place of business outside of the car dealerships that we see and the, and the double deuce. The only places of business that exist in this little town. The only free operating, and it's actually right by the bar. And uh, there's this dude who plays... Uh, What's his name in the movie? Red West, I believe, is well, the Red name West, of his character. Red West, no, Red West is his Bro, name. His real name. I believe. I believe um, his name is Red in the movie, too. Well, I think it's Reb, isn't it? Rev? Rev. Hold on, I'll be able to tell you in two secs. Probably be useful if we put our headphones on, but he plays Red Webster. His uh, name in real life is Red West. He plays, he plays Red Webster. Old Red West is notable because he was uh, Elvis Presley's boyhood friend. And yes. he was part of the Memphis Mafia that you hear so much about. His his cousin Sonny was Elvis's bodyguard and whatnot. Um, so this dude is not only an actor, and he's acted in a shitload of fucking movies. Yeah. But he's been a character in movies as well. Anytime they make a movie about Elvis, there's a Red there's a West. Red West. And interestingly enough, he's his son, who's an actor, John Boyd West, played him in an Elvis TV movie. Wow. That will never happen. For me, because I got a daughter. So if they ever make a movie in which Kevin Smith is a character, she unless it's a Victor Victoria kind of thing, she's not gonna she's not do gonna it. Know. Unless they want it to depict me accurately as having no fucking dick whatsoever, then she could play me in that movie. She could. But isn't that isn't that kooky? Like this was this this is the Red West. This is the dude who is tight with Elvis. Oh, terrific. Hope you're gonna clean that place up. Bad element over there. I think I think what? his kid might have played him more than once. I thought when I read it that his kid played him a couple times. Did he play him in the? He in didn't the play him in the in, in the Carpenter one. No, no, on the Carpenter one, he would have been a kid. In the John Carpenter one, the one with you know Kurt Russell, 
uh, Robert Gray played Red West. Mm-hmm. But could you imagine, like, you're... Like, this dude's built a career playing an actor, and he's got a long list of credits. Yeah. Um, but you're also... Uh, somebody, uh, you, some other actor has played you, essayed the role of fucking Red West, in your lifetime, multiple times. Tai Chi. Is that what it is? I believe he's doing Tai Chi. <laughs> I thought you said tight jeans. Yeah, I'm like, like yeah, tight pants. Tight. I'm, again, check this dude out. No shirt. Glistening fucking muscles. Do you see the stitch from where he was, the the scar from where he stitched himself uh, up? Or is this a long time know. has passed since then? I think he heals like Wolverine. He's got that mutant healing factor? He does. God, He's if I had a body like that, I would walk around my shirt off all the time, too. No two ways about it. And beg people to shoot me. Like on there film. it is. Look at there's there's the moment. See, that's more of a perspective of what you would see from totally. across the river. A realistic perspective. He just thinks he's a jackass. I, with the sound so turned down, this movie is insanely homoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> Without hearing what's going on. Wait, there is a scar. I think. But he's underestimating him. That's his downfall right there. That scene, that that's a pivotal scene where basically he rides up on his ATV and he mm-hmm. underestimates him because he thinks he's doing some Chinese pansy shit. Um, again, sound turned down. It's like a series of dudes looking <laughs> at dudes with their shirts off. Do you think uh, they'll make a biopic about Jeff Healy one day the way they made one about Ray Charles? It would have to be a Canadian biopic, but do you think they'll do it? Um, I don't want to say no. You don't want to rule it out? I don't want to rule it out. I'm going to say, I'm going to, if I had to put money on it today, I, I would say no. And that's a, no offense to Jeff Ely. I mean, whatsoever. He's a Canadian institution, sir. And in a very popular movie, a movie that will, will uh, go down uh, well remembered in history. I, I don't know. I don't think it's too far fetched. Plus, it's Canadian TV. I mean, they got to fill it with Canadian heroes. And, and I th- I'd say Jeff, Jeff Ely constitutes. A Canadian hero? He's got to be one. Well, I got to say, I mean, they got to do Brian Adams before that, though. You're probably right. It's He's, a if, foregone conclusion that if there will a, actually be. If they're listing it at the CBC or CTV, if they're listing out the biopics, Jeff Feely's not number one. Really? He's not. I mean, no, and once again, I mean, no, no offense, offense to Jeff Feely. And no offense to Brian. Oh, this dude Uh-oh, he's got a buck knife. knife out. Yeah. Look at him. How will Dalton take it? Two swipes and he leans back. I got I'm surprised he's somebody hasn't giddy. taken their shirt off yet. Oh, I thought uh, he was going for his yeah. pants for a second. What, do you want to kiss and make up? It's always some fat guy smooching like a pig at you. <laughs> Making <going>. kissing <laughs> face. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, through the... You knew that was coming, sir. The moment there was a window, somebody was going through it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another knife. God, Didn't this dude learn plenty. anything? Oh, oh another shit. Another cut. Fuck you, dude. I'm going to sew it up myself later on. What do you think they're... What's the draw of watching people fight? What's the draw of Yeah, like, we, we really fell silent to watch the fight. Like, why... Well... I mean, even though we know it's a fake fight, it's like watching wrestling to some degree. Why why, why do you think we're intrigued? One, it, it allows us to not need to fight ourselves. Do you, Have you ever been in a fight? Not really. Nothing that I would compare. Nothing where, like, there was blood and, and glass. Whoa. Um, nothing where I, I would call it anything worth watching. Nobody would have stopped to watch the altercation I was in. Let me put I was it that in, way. I was in one sort of fight, um, two actually, throughout the course of my lifetime. One, I was at the uh, YMCA in Red Bank at one point, Kelly Lynch. And, um, and uh, me and my cousin Johnny were in there and we were playing video games. More interested in playing video games than going swimming or doing anything athletic. And... Uh, some kids came up to us and, and said, uh, yo, you got any money for the video games? And so we gave him some of the quarters. And then the dude was like, no, we want all the money. And I said, and my cousin was a little smaller than me. Mm-hmm. Um, he was younger, about a year or two younger than me. And um, I said, um, I said, well, what are we going to play games with? And they said, we don't care. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> I don't know why I even asked. And then they said, uh, they said, Yo, which one of these dudes are we gonna hit first? And these dudes were bigger than us too. And um, somebody in the group, because there were four of them against two of us, go, "Don't hit the little one, hit the fat one." 
and I was <laughs> dreading it because I knew I was the fat one, and I knew the punch was coming, and I got punched like right in the chest, and then they took like two dollars from us, and and then we went and played video games like in the next room and shit, and we went and told the YMCA people and whatnot, and they st they were like, well, can you prove it? I said no. So I wouldn't kind of, I wouldn't really be a fight. I was like nine at the so time, you needed, ten. You needed a Swayze. I, know, I did. I needed a Swayze dog. I needed to go <laughs> there was like... track him down and be like, look, I got some trouble at the YMCA. You want to be a bouncer? Um, <laughs> no, interesting. <arcade> bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> in the YMCA. Interestingly enough, though, um, somebody in that little scenario had their shirt off because we were in the locker room. <laughs> so apparently, whenever there's shit going down, somebody has a shirt Somebody's off. Somebody's got to take their shirt off. The only other fight I was ever kind of somewhat involved with in my life was... Um, I think uh, I've heard this. Yeah, one. Ernie O'Donnell. Ernie O'Donnell. Ernie O'Donnell was going, uh, kind of going with this girl named uh, Carla when we were... And she went to a different school. Like, we hung out with her, me, him, and, and Carla, and Ernie liked her, and... and I, I don't know if she really liked Ernie or not, but she would tell me that she didn't. And I didn't like her. She was just a girl that I that I hung out with. And um, I guess she told Ernie she didn't want to date him or anything like that. And, and she had given Ernie a pair of sunglasses or something. So Ernie, I guess, assumed that I was the guy that came between him or something like that. So he comes up to me in the hallway, and he'd been avoiding me all day. And, like, there were whispers of a fight and shit. And I'm like, this is my friend. He's not going to fight me. And I'm at my locker room in the hallway. And I was in high school at this point. I'm going to put my books away in the locker. And Ernie goes, uh, these are for Carla. And he gives me her sunglasses. And I go, oh, dude, I don't want those. And then he slams me into the locker. And then he starts to try to, like, grab me to elbow me in the face. But uh -huh. he didn't grab me successfully. So he missed. And so, and I'm not so not trying to sound like a tough guy. Like, I had this dude, like, I was fucking Dalton. I don't think but people are going to take nobody, it. Yeah, nobody's buying that tough guy. But he just didn't connect. He, he was just, he just... He missed. Yeah, totally missed. And, and the whole time, I'm still putting my books away. And yeah. there's a crowd around us. Like, because when a fight breaks right. out, yeah, yeah. people, people want to see some bloodshed. And there was a big crowd around us. And, um... You know, I don't remember if anyone was chanting, like, kick, kick his ass or kill him or whatever. But I just kept putting my books away going, Ern, I don't want to fight you, man. And um, it just eventually dissolved. Like, Ernie just, just kind of walked away. Huh. And it was, like, the only near fight example I've been in, and it was strange. You know, I never want to be in, in a fight myself, well, particularly in a bar fight. Like, what's his... Like, uh, Muse has been in... Jason Muse, uh, who plays Jay in the movies we've done, has been in many a fight. Mm-hmm. But also, he'll he'll be in fights that he didn't even instigate. Like, he'll be in a bar, and somebody will be like, you that guy in Clerks? And they'll go, yeah, and they'll punch him in the fucking face. And, and then he has to... Shit. And then, yeah, and then he fucking breaks out and, and beats the shit out of people. Because he's a pretty wild fighter. Joey Adams, who was in Chasing Amy, she said she was in a bar in Arkansas, and the girl was like, are you that girl who was in Chasing Amy? She said, yeah, and the girl punched her in the fucking face. Like, what? why do people go to bars, dude? I know you want to get your drunk on, but what can't you do it at home? Well, obviously, they go to bars to find people from movies and punch, <laughs> them, punch in the them in the face. <laughs> it's insane to me, man. Well, let me just say this about fighting, and this is a quote from the movie, which yes. is, nobody ever wins a fight. That's what that's Daltonism. That's what we're going to wrap up our conversation with fights about. Is that nobody oh, I was putting a cap on the fight. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were done. Yeah, I was like, like movie ain't over. even over, sir. I'm like, the big, the monster truck has arrived. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the picture's calm. just taken There's off. There's nothing more to say. This is, uh, this is a scene where the, the, the Ben Gazzara's character, um, he lines up his lackeys and, and tells him the plan. Yeah, well, and then bitch and slaps that guy, him. <laughs> that guy obviously had a problem with the plan. Talked back. Come on, Ben. But he, he, he don't care. He's going to give it to him. If he would have called him. Back. Oh, he he gave it to him in the fucking nuts, too. Could you imagine? It's like, you know you could fucking beat up uh, his character. You know you can beat up Brad Wesley, the Jasper Kingpin, because that's where this whole movie takes place in Jasper. But if you throw a punch at him, you're going to get killed by everyone else and stuff. So you got to let this old man beat you up. It's it's probably the equivalent of getting your money stolen at the YMCA as a nine-year-old. This is a lot like, you know, this... This is a lot like what happened to you. Oh, he hit him again. I thought they were friends. Did you know that most people have 23 pairs of chromosomes and Dalton has 72 and they're all poisonous? <laughs> you know, I didn't know that. <laughs> Dalton drives an ice cream truck covered in human skulls. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. In a like, fight between Do Batman and Darth Vader, the winner would be Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy it. <laughs>
police label anyone attacking Dalton as a code 4511, which is a suicide, sir. He's oh, wearing, they, they went after Red. Oh, uh, so this is when the this is when the drifter, the man, the man, what is he wearing a karate shirt? A dojo? <laughs> that was the style at the time. <laughs> you um, can get away with rocking a, a gi, if you will. Every week. He don't like to see the little man downtrodden. It's he one thing to like to come into a business. one thing to come into a bar and start some shit, but you never want to walk into town and and see like little guy getting attacked and shit like that. A little mom and pop shop. I have to say that I was reading some of the reviews of the movie, and they and one of the reviews said that Kelly Lynch's character sleeps with them on the first she does. right after they met. Yeah, well, in the movie, but not on. The, but it's on their first date. Yeah, they haven't gone on a date. Yet. Oh, okay, like him, her stitching him up. Doesn't, doesn't really constitute, constitute a date, date, especially when he could have stitched himself up. Well, then why did he go? That's an interesting question. I wonder why. Because we I saw him. We, would have been listening. <laughs> we might have known. Oh, snap, son. See what they literally are saying. They really here keep is you that... intrigued the whole time. I mean, oh. the great Sam Elliott. Um, but they literally, that bar is so hardcore, they're like crossed out t shirt and made it a wet G string contest. Yeah, that is hardcore. Um, I, that's why I don't like the movie became a big cable favorite. But on cable, on TBS and TNT, you miss the jiggle. Like they don't they don't show the boobs. That's yet still that's the power of this film, sir. Is that even though it's it's become massively popular, even without bare chest. Yeah, it's... they didn't have to show the boobs to do it. It's just the content of the film. It's the the draw of the drama that that pulls people in. Do you like Sam Elliott? Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Sam Elliott. I gotta say, he's Dalton abides, sir. He, uh, he's my Dalton. Is he really? <laughs> Do you know what Sam Elliott's first movie appearance was? I believe it was. He started as a stuntman, I believe. But I know he was in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And do you know what his other connection to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid is? Um, no. He's married to Catherine Ross. Oh. Years later, they got married. But uh, he's in the opening sepia, the stuff at the beginning of the movie that's in sepia. Yeah, he plays. He's one of the card players. Yeah. Um, he's a dude that always sounds like he's from the West, but it really is from Sacramento, California. Well, you know, um, I know a couple of people from Sacramento, and they, they have um, a southern draw. There's a certain, you know, Donald's from Sacramento, and he's got a little bit there. I all I know about Sacramento is when I was a kid, I watched that TV show Eight Is Enough. Mm -hmm. You know, with uh, Dick Van Patten. Yeah. I think that was his name. And they lived in Sacramento. I also know that it's the capital of California. <laughs> but none of the none of the Van Pattens ever sounded like they had a Texas drawl. See, here's a moment in the film where they make a statement by, I think they've taken the chicken wire down. Oh, not only is the chicken wire down, but they're willing to let her sing. She was not a part of the band before, but now they're willing to put a girl on stage without fear of reprisal, the some bottles. beer bottle hitting her or something like that. Um, but, you know, Kevin Teague's club owner character got to redo the place the way he wanted to. That's good. And he's feeling pretty good about it right about now. Um, this chick right here, Julie Michaels. Julie Michaels. Julie Michaels had a massive career and still has a massive career as a stunt woman. Does she do both? Is she acting too, or is she mostly doing stunts? Uh, now lately she's mostly doing stunts, but she she continues to act. She was just in Desperate Housewives. Uh, she's been in Baywatch. I would say it's pretty evenly balanced between the two. <laughs> <laughs> the monster truck is fantastic. <laughs> you digging it? That's just that thing where it's like, what's you know, what's popular, and you got to figure that you write in a monster truck. It's menacing. That's why a movie like this, like it just got picked up by uh, CMT, country, mu country Music Television. Yeah. It, it really has all the elements you want in it. It like, does. There's kind of like a, a country rockabilly music running throughout it. There's a monster truck. You know, it's about values, you know, and it's about if you got to kick ass, the dude's got the fucking knife in his boot. And Dalton saw it already. Well, he's, he's got the eye. Did you know that Dalton doesn't wash his clothes? He disembowels them. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> oh, he broke his... Did you see that? He literally broke his ankle. Yeah. Well, he's Dalton, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Dalton once shot down a German fighter plane with his finger by yelling bang? I didn't know that one. 
Dalton originally appeared in the Street Fighter 2 video game, but was removed by beta testers because every button caused him to do a roundhouse kick. When asked about this glitch, Dalton replied, that's no glitch. Genius. Dalton's got two speeds, my brother. Walk and kill. Dalton once ate a whole cake before his friends could tell him there was a stripper in it. <laughs> <laughs> Time waits for no man unless that man is Dalton. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, America is not a democracy, it's a Dalton dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Lynch, where do you think she did this in relation to to Drugstore Cowboy? This was before. You think it's before? Yeah. Let's see if you're right, man. Roadhouse, 89. Drugstore Cowboy, also 89. Wow, so Same we year. can't say. That one, did, oh, I mean, one probably established her. They both came out in 89? As a classy actress, and the other, you know, kind of gave her some she was mainstream hot. cred. And I believe there's a bit of nudity in here for her later on. Yeah? Oh, yeah. She was a born in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. She looks like a Midwestern girl. She does. Started her acting career with a small job at the Guthrie Theater. She studied under acting teacher Sanford Meisner and became a model for the famous Elite Modeling Agency. She first gained acclaim for acting in Gus Van Sant's film Drugstore Cowboy. Uh, she earned an Independent Spirit Award nomination for that role. Somebody and for her role in the Beans of Egypt, Maine. She's married to Mitch Glazer. He's a writer. She is. He worked on Scrooged. Yep. Many years ago, among other things. This is, I did not know, she turned down the Sharon Stone role in Basic Instinct. Wow. She could have been the chick who uncrossed her leg. She could be in Basic Instinct, too. She could have been. She probably was too classy to open her legs up and show a vag. Yeah. This dude, have her work in this dude. Even somebody like little dude's gonna fall asleep at the and counter. And he's taking care of him. He just told, pimps his hand out there, throws some cash down. So I guess this constitutes their first date. All right. Hey, Any anyway, time that you go out and have a meal separate of other people, mm -hmm. look at what they did to his car. This is what you'd call a reoccurring gag, right? Oh, totally. As a writer, I would definitely say <laughs> <laughs> that that is a reoccurring gag. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that uh, <laughs> Dalton doesn't teabag the ladies? He potato sacks them. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> there are no races. There are no races, sir. Only countries of people that Dalton has beaten to different shades of black and blue. <laughs> When Dalton was denied an egg McMuffin at McDonald's because it was 10.35, he round cow roundhouse kicked the store so hard it became a Wendy's. <laughs> <coughs> See, there it is, the beginning. That, all right, she just kissed him. God, she is kind of pretty, isn't she, Kelly Lynch? She's pretty. Her hair is very dated. But you think so? In what way? Because it's got about a... Get, it's very hairsprayed. Look at it. I mean, it's up. That's, that 80s was up. The hair needed to come off of the, the scalp and go up. Well, and and, and de the deeper in the eighties we were, the higher it was actually. The higher it actually was. Clearly, that wasn't their first date because she left, without getting potato sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, there is indeed enough Dalton to go around. <laughs> They're always sending this dude's me and this dude uh, Ben Gazzara's character is always sending his messengers and really he could just go to the edge of the lake and be like, <laughs> just yell over. you're fucked. But he opts not to do it. Or it's the chubby guy. Yeah, the chubby dude's always being painted as fearful as well, which I completely resent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's coming over now. Yeah, he invited him to his house. Because one pool table wasn't enough. This is where you get to see the menagerie of, of, of animals and he's things a hunter. that he's killed. Yeah. Well, we don't know that he's a hunter. We just know he's killed a lot of things. Uh-oh. 
she got the smack in the eye. That is going to make him angry. Of course. He hates uh, injustice, you know. Well, sir, uh... <laughs> can divide by zero. <laughs> uh, Dalton doesn't actually write books. The words assemble themselves out of fear. Will you shut that shit off? <laughs> Dalton can believe it's not butter. When Dalton has sex with a man, it won't be because he's gay. It will be because he's run out of women. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> My grandfather. Looks like an important man. He was an asshole. Dalton doesn't bowl strikes. He just knocks down one pin and the other nine faint. The show Survivor had the original premise of putting on an island with Dalton, putting all the people on the island with Dalton. There were no survivors in the pilot episode. Tape has been burned. <laughs> Did you know it takes Dalton 20 minutes to watch 60 minutes? <laughs> Dalton doesn't believe in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten rich off of the people in this town. <laughs> Do you know this movie was uh, shot by Dean Cundy? I did not know that. You know who Dean Cundy is, don't you? Uh, no. He's Dean, a DP. Yeah, he's a DP, and he shot Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He shot Jurassic Park. Yeah, he was a Spielberg kid because he worked on Casper, Flintstones. Um. He he went on to shoot Apollo 13 as well. He shot DC Cab. Big Trouble in Little China. Wow. Back to the fucking future, sir. The same person that shot <laughs> Roadhouse shot Back to the Future. Did he shoot all three? He did. He's also shot Escape from New York, Halloween 2, The Thing. The Halloween Thing. 2 is a good looking movie. Psycho 2. Did he shoot Halloween Romance 1? in the Stone. He shot The Fog. He did shoot the first Halloween. Jesus, man. So this dude has been hardcore um, John Carpenter, hardcore Zemeckis, Zemeckis, hardcore Steven Spielberg, and now hardcore uh, Rowdy Roddy Har Harrington, the director of the movie, who we didn't really even talk about. Rowdy Harrington um, directed, uh, before this movie, he directed a flick called Jack's Back. Did you ever see it? With uh, James Spader. James Spader. Yeah. About Jack the Ripper. Uh-huh. He later on he did Gladiator, but not you know the Gladiator that everyone seems to remember, the one with the the boxing flick with the, Cuba, with Cuba Gooding Jr. and the dude who was in Twin Peaks. Yeah, he Look did that. that. I saw that movie when I was in Vancouver when I when I met you in film school in '92. Yep. I saw it up there on a weekend by myself. Went to a movie that went and saw three movies that day. I saw Gladiator, saw Ruby, uh -huh. the one with uh, Danny Aiello. I saw Aiello. Ruby with you. And Did then you? I split. And then you split. You watched one with me, and you're like, fuck this. And I was like, I'm going to see two more movies. And I snuck into the other two. I think I think uh, he did Striking Distance as well. Mm -hmm. With Bruce Willis. With Bruce Willis. And Sarah Jessica Park but in prior Pittsburgh. To, in Pittsburgh. In the Pittsburgh. But prior to this, he was a gaffer. Big time uh -huh. gaffer. He worked on Hots, dude, as an electrician. Remember Hots? Mm -hmm. Hold on to sex. He was a... Movie with the seal. Repo Man. He was a grip. He brought a little something to this movie, I think. He wrote Jack's Back. He wrote and directed it. He also wrote Striking Distance. Um, he brought something to this movie. A lot of people, I, I think, look, there's a big discussion as to whether this movie is uh, so bad it's good, or did they know that they were making a film that was uh, kind of playing with archetypes, stereotypes? Were they parodying male machismo? What do you think? Um, were they sitting here going like... They we're consciously gonna... sort of like... No, were they knowingly kind mm. of parodying this type of movie, yes. or were they making this? Or type were they of movie? making this type of movie, and they were so committed, it's just you know funny. I gotta say, they were making this movie. You really? You don't think? Like, I don't know. I don't I, know. If you see Jack's back, it, there's a sense of humor going on there that makes me think that maybe the dude he kind of was, was winking a bit it. while he was making this picture. I'll take care of it. Did you know that Joel Silver was a producer of this movie? I did. It was a silver picture. It was a silver picture. Joel Silver, of course, responsible for many movies, like, of course, The Matrix, all The Matrix movies, 
the Lethal Weapon movies. Any action movie you liked in the last few, in the last I don't know twenty years, he probably had a hand in. Um, and some of the ones you didn't like either. <laughs> um, but he was Roadhouse was was his. Do you know he was a producer on Weird Science? I did not know That's that. That's the one movie that really doesn't fit into the whole silver oeuvre. But here's something I guarantee you didn't know about Joel Silver. Okay. Did you know that Joel Silver invented the cesarean section when he roundhouse kicked his way out of his mother's <laughs> womb? Um, he is uh, is responsible for the sport of extreme frisbee. Wow. Ultimate frisbee. Considered the primary founder of ultimate frisbee. In 1968 at Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey. He's from Jersey. He's from South wow. Orange, New Jersey. I had relatives in, in Maplewood. Um, Did they know of him as the great Frisbee? Mm-mm. But he attended Lafayette College where he formed the first collegiate Ultimate Frisbee team in 1970. So this dude had two careers. He created Ultimate Frisbee, and then he was like, ah, fuck, I'm going to That wasn't enough? Movies. No, it wasn't enough. Would have been enough for some men. Do you know that like Joel, Silver, Joel Silver walked into a, a Burger King, ordered a Big Mac, and got one. <laughs> Do you have any Joel Silver factoids? On his birthday, Joel Silver randomly selects one lucky child to be thrown into the sun. <laughs> I've heard that. It takes 14 puppeteers to make Joel Silver smile, but only two to make him destroy an orphanage. <laughs> Joel Silver built a time machine and went back in time to stop the JFK assassination. As Oswald shot, Joel Silver met all three bullets with his beard, deflecting them. J.S. JFK's head exploded out of sheer amazement. <laughs> so how come you never got married? I did. Here's the, this has got to be the date scene, right? There's some sex coming up. Uh, there's probably a little nudie, you think? Let's hope so. I mean, it would be nice to even out the female nudity with the copious amounts of male nudity that we've seen in this picture. She's hot, he's hot. <laughs> Together? Together, it's just hot. Instant heat. They should call this chapter 26 hot. When you were uh, a kid watching movies like this, yeah. uh, did you learn anything about how to make moves on a girl? Uh, you can never be as movie smooth as, say, Dalton, but... Uh, did you ever try? Like, do you think movies are, are responsible for whatever mojo you got with chicks? Oh, did I learn my moves? Did I learn some moves? Like, did you take that move where you take a woman's hands and rub them up and down your chest? Like, I would never do that. Like, feel my man boobs. I mean, I guess if I had pecs like Swayze, I'd be like, feel them. But uh, I would never take a woman's hands and put them on my man boobs. I would also not direct a woman's hands to my pants because I think she would just smack me. He would never do that. This, I, I I wouldn't do that either. It takes too pick much her up. effort. No, because you pick a woman up, and then you get I'd get all sweaty and shit, and my arms would fucking buckle, my legs would buckle. I'd probably fall and collapse on her and kill her. So <laughs> it'd probably be best to just not to not engage in that. Like uh, you don't want to be sweaty. Have you ever done this? Like made out with a chick against a wall? Um, I think I might have. Have you? Yeah. Never in my life have I fucked a chick against a wall. That just doesn't look comfortable to me. I'm a real lay down kind of guy. I'm a bottom lay down. Yeah, and it's not a good good decision for me to be on top anyway, for for her safety and also because I run out of breath so quickly. Um, I I think I I believe I have. Um, I didn't I I, I can't say perhaps I, I I've taken my cue from this movie. You're rubbing her against a brick wall, sir. Well, and I'm, not even a smooth I, I, brick it's wall. It's not like I did it in that room. <laughs> right. I'm sure you didn't. But you're Years Dalton, later. and you're rubbing the chick against the brick wall. Like, it's not, in real life, the chick would be like, ow, can we move to the couch or bed or something like that? Well, she did laugh, and, like, they moved away from it. So perhaps she did say something like that. Ooh. Yeah, he, uh, Rowdy likes to shoot off mirrors, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's, it's, that was sex it. was just too powerful to show. Too darn good. It was too hot. And in movies, when people wake up, particularly after having sex, just, they never look like that. No. Never. Now, if in real life, this girl would like, she would quickly run to the bathroom. Wash. Brush her teeth, wash out, maybe wash the thing. Yeah. Um, but she would not just go out and talk to this dude. No. Maybe, maybe I'm sheltered and maybe I'm crazy, but... <laughs> 
two impossibly beautiful people never step naked out onto a ledge and just hang out talking, do they? Like those two people? Yeah. Um, like outside of the realm of this movie? Yeah. You're gonna have a lot of pain. When um, I, I, I think it would be wrong to say that two beautiful people don't yeah, stand around naked. Really? It's gotta happen somewhere. Probably, but outside of a porno set, you think this is normal? Well, I mean, they're out in the middle of nowhere. It's not like they're like in the Fifth but Avenue. Neighbor is right across the street. The yeah, evil but psycho you can runs see a town. Artist to see across. <laughs> well, there. then this movie, as depicted in this movie, you just basically look and you could see what's going on. But see, Dahl doesn't care. He's out there with his cannon out. He's fucking like telling him to... <laughs> his cannon out. He's you know a... why that is? Because uh, the Bermuda Triangle used to be the Bermuda Square until Dalton Roundhouse kicked one of the corners off. That's how tough that <laughs> motherfucker is. So he don't care if he's spotted. I think it, I think it's awfully weird and telling that like he's completely nude and she's covering up with a sheet, probably because she's got more to show than he do he does, I guess. So now they're gonna do it on this uncomfortable roof. That's all this movie is about: is sex on uncomfortable surfaces. <laughs> and and look at him, he's just <laughs> rocks back and forth into the frame, and he's gonna watch. Oh, look, he's doing the two two hands on each cheek like a he hand is, on cheeks cupping her ass it. so you're putting on a show and you know you pretty much you don't know but you could pretty much assume your neighbor is just watching i mean have you ever had sex in public where you know you could be seen i mean granted as you said they're not on fifth avenue in new york but well that old coots around is that what really you're a thin person as speaking as a thin person would you yeah. have sex in public um, it would not be on the top of my list to have sex in public. Um, you don't have like that exhibition, exhibitionist streak. Do you nah. think that's what it takes to fuck in public to have an exhibitionist streak? I, I, as a fat person, I assume it's just, it requires having a good body. So if you feel like you have a good body, you don't care where you fuck or whoever sees you. Big body, good body and a big dick if you're a dude. Um. I have neither. I have a terrible <laughs> body and a small dick, so I would never fuck in public. But whenever I see movies where... People are fucking in public. I'm, they're always thin, and I'm like, I guess that's what it takes. You gotta be thin, and you gotta have a big dick. Speaking as a thin dude with a big dick, can you back that up? <laughs> I uh, it never occurs to me to want to like have sex in public. You've been spending time with Elizabeth Clay. Um, now where you now where people, I mean, like, there's sex in public places, right? But that's different from like sex out in the in the, in the in open. The open. But, like, why like, would you want to have sex on a rooftop when there's a comfy bed three feet away? Do you think well, chicks see, like that? Just like my thing would be like, I, I think maybe I would start thinking like, are we gonna slide off? And that might ruin the right? mood. That's that's logic, logic. But I guess I'm in not, movies, passion overrides logic. Yeah, and you're you you don't care. And you're they're just harnessed so, in. Well, there's that. But in the reality of the movie, you're just so passionate about the person. That you're fucking, excuse me, that you're willing to fucking dangerous, like, slidey places where you yeah. could literally On fall a, off the roof. Yeah, I, I, that would be my issue. I would be fearful <laughs> of um, sliding off the roof. If I knew the neighbor was right across the way, it would not occur to me that that would be fun. They really redid the double deuce, didn't they? Yeah. Last time we saw it was a total shithole, and now it looks like a shopping mall. Yeah, I, I don't. I, whenever I watch flicks, I'm always like, "It's amazing timing poison. where it's just like, the new guy pulls in mm -hmm. and basically the four guys pull up." You know what that is? Uh, screenwriting. Because in real life, that don't happen like that. It's not that. It takes. It, ta it would take like the next day. Totally. Yeah, Twenty-four like, hours. Would show up in two separate times or something like that. This dude, he's tired of getting his ass handed to him. See that other dude, the, the tall giant? dude, the giant. He played Lothar. In um, the Rocketeer. Oh, really? Yeah, the dude who was wow. like, "Where's the rocket?" You had wow. all the makeup on and stuff like that. Oh, there it is. Sir. Look at him. He's just smashing bottles. <laughs> yeah, as this fast dude. As he can. Yeah, he's like, "I'm not getting in a fight. I'm just gonna break bottles. And I'm gonna pick up." Oh, never do that. Never grab a dude from behind so he can just bash the back of the back of his head into your mouth. Got a skinny little runt named Dalton working here. So this is the. I mean, would you? There's Keith David in the background. Oh, really? Yeah, how strange is that? Um, maybe he had a part that got cut out. Maybe, or maybe this was early on in his career. Um, would you would you rather drink in the place looking like it did in the beginning of the movie or now? Now it looks a little too now much like, like Sun Coast video. <laughs> yeah, it does. It kind of has a Chili's feel to it. Oh, the guy, uh-oh, here comes the giant. Where's the rocket? 
I sure ain't gonna show you my dick. Where, where, so which one would you rather drink at? Uh, um, I would personally, somewhere in between, when it was, the way it was, where like, there was too many fights in the beginning. Um, but somewhere in between where like, it became Chili's and it was like a totally dysfunctional, you know, boxing ring. Somewhere in between there. I think I would prefer to drink it. I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't be into the wild ruckus that it was, but I think I'd prefer to be at the other joint with the chicken wire and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. not like chicken wire was necessary because people were throwing bottles at a blind dude, but just because it well, had a, a nice ambiance There's a lot more flavor. Mm -hmm. Now it's very generic. I ain't going to drive all the way down south to go to a Chili's kind of bar with a bunch of dudes in polo shirts. No, shit, no. You go to the mall, like in the in the Sears parking lot. You yeah, can go exactly. to this joint. See, uh, Jeff Healy's character came out to see what was going on, <laughs> which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Because Healy knows, uh, I believe that uh, Jeff Healy knows... Um, the Sam Elliott character? Yeah, exactly. But still, I mean, you're not going to see anything. You might as well just have somebody well, tell you what happened. say hi. You think so? <laughs> Don't reduce his life <laughs> to a series of people telling him what happened. I mean, if Don't I was... get up, Jeff. If I was I'll blind, I would be terrified on. of, like, getting fallen over or something like that. I wouldn't really want... I'd want to stay in one place and have people explain what happened to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just my take on it. Well, I think Jeff's a little bit more ambitious. But Who's... just like with the sex, it's like, you know, it's a movie, so... <laughs> Who's tougher, do you think? Um, Sam Elliott's character or, or Dalton's character? Um, I think the way that the movie presents it is that in a fight, um, possibly... Is it Dalton or is it Wade Garrett? Who's tougher? Wade Garrett is the, uh, the character portrayed by Sam Elliott. They're portraying him as the, you know... The um, guy who taught... Yeah. Dalton, all his moves, including gotta fuck chicks in very uncomfortable places like yeah, against exactly. the wall. Whoa. Look at this shit. Wow. Is ever a series of people pulling their jars down? That's a rare, like, male pubic hair shot, too, in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in awe. You know how tough Wade Garrett is? No. When he does a push up, he isn't lifting himself up, he's pushing the earth down. <laughs> um, I watched this movie on my own uh, without. Without uh, prompting, um, mm -hmm. uh, last summer, yeah, I think it was in June that I watched it. Okay, I was up in Vancouver shooting a movie, and um, I had the DVD, so I, I wanted to watch. I didn't even watch it on TV. I actually put it in to watch the DVD, and um, that scene and this scene here made me think that he was uh, trying to get into the three way with them. He was. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I read this scene. You say the idea of pulling your pants down to show your pubic hair. Pretty much. It's just like, you know, wants there. to gauge her reaction and gauge Dalton's reaction and see if, like, maybe Dalton's like, all right, yeah, let's do it. But it doesn't come to pass. Might have been a weirder movie for that. If but not out of place in, this, in, in the flick like this. I don't think it would have. Maybe with that three way scene, it might have not have become a cable classic. It would have been too. It would have taken some. You would have lost half your audience. Right yeah, there. people have been like, "Oh, this is gross." No, you know, never mind the fact that like it can be homoerotic, cut. but it can't be straight. Can't up. cross that line. Can't cross that line. That's what I'm saying. There's so many dudes with their shirts off in this picture. Like you could, it could have cut right from that bar at all three of them in bed, like sleeping morning after kind of thing. Oh, then they all go out <laughs> on the roof and have a cigarette, and then they get in a three way on the roof as well. And Ben Gazzara is still sitting on his porch rocking back and forth going, going Jesus, I gotta get over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that movie. <laughs> Your hands what, uh, you make Roadhouse, right? Yeah. And years later, it's it's uh, embraced and, and hailed as kind of a camp uh, cult classic. Yeah. Do you feel like, right on, like, all right, we made Mallrats. Yeah. Mallrats comes out, nobody likes it. Yeah. Years later, it finds its audience on video, and, and people go like, that's a really good movie. And, like, people like it. Like, mm -hmm. nobody says it's genius, but people really found an audience. Yeah. That was a movie that, you know, it's just we tried to make a comedy, and the comedy eventually wound up working. Yeah. But it's not like people go, like, it's redefined uh, as, as a new classic or something like that. It's just like, it, finally, they found the movie on video. People the, took it for its intentions. Took it for its intentions. This movie gets embraced years down the road yeah. um, for something that it wasn't really intending to be. 
How how do you take it as the filmmaker? Um, I think you gotta find. Uh, I think you have to be happy with it. I think I'm happy with it. You think so? Are you happy just that anybody likes it? It don't matter under I mean, what circumstances. You know, you, I mean, you, you know, these guys. You, if you take it in the context of the time, I mean, you're 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 making this movie back then. It's like there's a fucking monster truck, but you know, at the time, you're like <laughs> monster trucks will stay the test of time, stand the test of time. You're making a movie, you know, for the time, and and if years later it 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 sort of, you know, it kind of was what it was and if people found it to be you know watchable because it's a little campy it's like shit man having a movie that people want to watch is you gotta you gotta feel good about that which because you don't want to be the other guy you don't want to be the guy where it's like you made the movie that people just don't want to watch right the regardless the movie that people are absolutely indifferent about yeah the movie that turns tvs off where they're just like oh fuck the movie that can't even get on tv right well, we've made a lot of movies that can't get on TV. But that's because we talk. There's too, There's too much dirty talk in it. But you just want to know that people are watching your movie. And, 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 you know, I think with time, it would become easier to take, like, two years after you made it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, you know, if you made a movie with one intention and then immediately people show, you know, different intentions or, or people like it for other reasons, maybe you feel bad, you know, in the months right after. But... You know, if you, you know, 10 years later, I don't know how many years later it is. What is it? Oh, 16 it's, years it's, later? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it is. If this was 89, it's uh, 99 would be 10 years. And uh, 99, so 18 years? No, 17 years. Yeah. God, they blew up Red's joint. They did. God willing, Red wasn't in it. Or I think Red was, and then somebody's got to go in and drag Jesus. him out. Um, but hopefully Red wasn't in there. It's like Dalton destroyed it with his gaze. What, what the fuck the ambulance? The ambulance is like, fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> Obviously, he's dead. Oh, he wasn't there. Red's safe. But he's pissed. pissed. Yeah. Safe but pissed. He's got That's the best we can hope for now. in life. Did you know that Roadhouse was turned into a stage play? I did not know that. Um, the proper name of the play was Roadhouse, colon, the stage version of the cinema classic that starred Patrick Swayze, except this one stars Tamak from the 80s cult classic The Last Dragon wearing a blonde mullet wig. That's the full name of the, of the play. Wow. Um, it played at the Barrow Street Theater um, back in 2004, had a limited run from December 10th to February 8th um, in New York on uh, Barrow Street at 7th Ave. And uh, was was widely uh, held to be really fun, really good. They called it a. It wasn't a musical. It was a brawlsicle. A brawlsicle. A brawlsicle. That would entice me. I would go. I wouldn't you? And what they did was they had somebody doing foley right off stage. Oh really? Fights? Because <laughs> there fights. Because fights, you know, don't sound, in real world don't sound like they do um, in movies. So they had somebody off camera, or not off camera, but off stage. With with foley noises, so if somebody threw a punch, you'd hear Psh! Uh. and bro- breaking bottles, same thing. They really kind of went all out for it. Maybe it's they'll maybe this commentary will have, it'll have a revival, a maybe renewed interest. Come back. It, 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 it'd be nice. I mean, it's a shame something like that doesn't make it to Broadway. With all the crap they do throw up on Broadway now, why not that? Um, why do you think she does this dance? I mean, I know she does it at the behest of uh, Ben Gazzara, but why does her character? feel the need to kowtow to this clown because he beat her up is that it like one slap in the eye and you're like get up there and dance um i I mean obviously she's also a little bit of an exhibitionist Uh i think she's enjoying herself she likes to entertain and even though she's mad at him for hitting him she's excited to entertain she's an entertainer at heart at heart um, but she's really, she's not embarrassing anybody but herself, I say. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know the whole plan is to embarrass the club, but, you know, truly this is just not nearly as embarrassing to the club as it is to her. Oh, she's not done. She's not done. Denied, Dalton. Dalton denied. She's doing, she's, she's trying to take it back to the chicken wire. Um, God, it looks like she's wearing an insanely <laughs> massive pants? <laughs> pair of panties, doesn't it? 
Oh, she is. I mean, they're kind of. Uh, they don't. They, just they, don't, cut they don't make them like that anymore, do they? Nah. I mean, that's they're they're long. It's not like they're granny panties, but they're they're insanely they're just, long. They're very high on the waist. Yeah. They're very strange cut. She's not really doing a good job of hiding that. that we can't really nipple. see her belly button. Well, that's because those panties are so high. <laughs> I mean, she might as well be wearing fucking suspenders on those things. If you're an actor, okay, and you've been, you've acted in movies. You've I've been, in, I've performed in, in some of the movies. You were in Clerks, I and was. you were in Mallrats, and you were in Chasing Amy, and you were in Dogma, and Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, and. Uh, Clerks too. You weren't in Jersey Girl. Neither you or I were in Jersey Girl. We weren't. Um, you've acted. Yeah. But you've never had to act opposite somebody who was taking their clothes off or naked on your body. Do you think that affects you? Like, do you think when he had to pick up the girl with no top on and and you know her her cleavage is rubbing against him that it affects him in some way? Um, you mean in a sexual way? <laughs> yeah, and or I know the dude. All... I know the dude's married. And he's been married for a long, long time. But do you think it? Like as an actor, not just... necessarily him, but do you think it affects an actor? Oh, this is shit, man. This is when the shit comes on. Yeah, this is the, this is the dude he's this gonna have when, to like... face down. Whoa, look at that Matrix moment. Don't give him the nod, Dalton, because he's oh, they're gonna get their asses handed to him. Um, do you think it affects him? Do you think it um, as an actor, not not Patrick Swayze, but uh, an actor? Do you think you go like, wow, this is cool. I had boobs on me and stuff like that. It's got, I, I assume so. Or do you think they're too into, like, I'm working, I, I'm not thinking about this shit? I assume that, like, you know, you can't you can't deny that um, there's a naked woman against you. I'm sure he's got to, like, you know, not be disgusted by it. Right. I don't know, what about you? Would you I, feel awkward? I would totally feel awkward. I wouldn't, I mean, I, you know... I think it's naked women are best looked at on a computer screen. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be in a room with one. Um, so it would be hard for you to stay in character. Yeah, it would be a little tough for me to, to stay in character. I believe, um, or not so much. I think I could get the job done. God, he used the dude's body to vault onto the stage with the pool cue. He call. He's calling him out. Yeah, he wants a little piece of. He of knows Sam karate. So it would seem. He's got that lightning bolt in his ear. That communicates worlds. You don't fuck with the dude who's got a lightning bolt in his ear. Dude kind of looks like a a not so uh, deeply molted version of uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, doesn't he? He does a little bit. Could you do he that? Was... I think you could flip a dude over your body. Um, if he was helping me. <laughs> <laughs> if he was helping me, like using his weight. See, Sam Elliott's got a bum leg, and this dude knows it, and he's going he's for it. He's taking advantage yeah. of it. Yeah, oh, Dalton to the rescue. See, this is a moment where that proves the argument. Who would win? In what way? Well, it's like... Apparently, the guy with the gun wins. Yeah, he I guess so. Pops it off, and everyone Led stops talks. fighting. I think that guy literally has worn the... The guy, the karate guy's worn the same outfit the whole movie. And that little horn necklace. That dude? He's like Popeye. He's got the same outfit every day. <laughs> you, you went right for the Popeye reach. So this dude, the dude with the the lightning bolt and the, and the hair and the mullet and a half, his name is Marshall Teague. Marshall. Yeah, and in a weird bit of synergy, in this Elvis thing that's going on in this movie, he played Rick Colton in the Elvis and Me TV movie, nineteen eighty eight. Wow, how strange is that? A lot of Elvis in here. A lot of Elvis in here. And, and also, did you know there's a dude in this movie named Anthony DeLongis who huh. was, uh, he plays a character, but he's also a knife and bullwhip expert. Batman Returns, he was a bullwhip trainer for uh, and choreographer for Michelle Pfeiffer. But the dude's career goes back, sword and a sorcerer, sir. Remember wow. that picture? I remember that. He was a trainer on that as well. He's a Masters of the Universe. He was the stunt double for Frank Langella, but he also played a character. I believe he played Blade, Masters of the Universe 2. Not 2, but, you know, as well. But uh, everyone, some people probably made fun of that dude growing up. Like, come on, dude, swords, grow up. But in Hollywood, they have a use for a dude who knows how to wield a sword. Well, he's got a whole career. He's got a, and bullwhips. And bullwhips as well. You really think people made fun of him? Um, maybe that's why he got tough. Because he was tired of getting picked on, getting sand kicked in his face. But yeah, I think uh, maybe not to his face, but people would be like, 
That dude's playing with bull whips again, you know? That dude's playing with swords again. But he turned it turned a career. It turned it into a fucking career. This is a pretty pivotal, famous scene. Where the guy with his <laughs> pants tucked into his cowboy boots comes running out. Yeah. Um, it's the one where uh, where the, the, what's his name? Ben Gazzara's character, who I I always forget. Brad Wesley is uh, show, being now being shown to terrorize the town. There's John Doe is the ex bartender. He's joined their little rabble, and now is where you get to see Bigfoot go to work. This is where the monster truck really comes into play. Totally, you were sitting there going like, "They brought a monster truck in. They better use it." You Here thought it, it was for show. The bang. I mean, that's you know, and and people wonder why this movie has such staying power. You know, because the country is made up of more places than just New York and L.A. Yeah. And it's that whole middle of the Everything country in between. where they love shit like this. They love to see a truck driving over shit. Um, and, the, and the idea of a giant truck is a real menace. Yeah. It's not something that in L.A. you really worry about. No, no. Size is everything, and a giant truck, man, that just it sends a very clear message. <laughs> it's pretty message. amazing that the whole town comes out. Wouldn't you? I mean, I, I you can't stop it, so you might as well watch it. I would be there, but wh how come Dalton's not jumping in? Yeah, that's what I think is weird is it's a total pedestrian event. I mean, it's just a matter of going out and being like, hey, the town shithead's going to fucking mow down this guy's <laughs> Ford dealership. <laughs> Let's check it out. If you don't, he's going down. See, apparently he used to like her. But not anymore. Well, yeah, he likes her still, but. You he know, does, but, but he's our... She belongs to to Dalton, my friend. As she's, I mean, she's a catch. She's she's a doctor. She's, she's still smart looks lady. good today, too. She does. She's an attractive lady. She was in uh, that Charlie's Angels picture. She looked good in that movie, too. Good actress, man. She's awesome in Drugstore Cowboy. She's excellent. Where she's like, you won't fuck me, and I always have to drive. drive. You know, fantastic. Let's go, Jimmy. When? When will Dalton step up, you think? You got insurance, don't you? I've seen the movie, so I know that he's going to step up. Look well, at God damn it. Once again with his fucking glistening. shirt on. Glowing. Just punching almost. a board. Do people still wear their sweats like that where they roll down the top? Um, Every time I wear sweats, I wear two shirts, so I would never do something like that. But do does that still a common occurrence? I don't even necessarily know how much people wear sweats anymore. Really? I mean, in What's replaced that the sweats? sort of like... Yeah, sweatpants. What's replaced them? Athletic pants, what, more scrub? like uh, like a lighter weight material. Like a lycra? I don't know if it's lycra, but I, I wish I had more. I, I'm just saying, I don't. What do you see, wear if you go out and work out? I usually wear shorts. You're so tough, you wear jeans. <laughs> I don't wear anything. I don't wear any bottoms. This I just Scott wear Wilder's a top. So tough, he doesn't eat food. Understands <laughs> the only safe haven from his fists is in his mouth. <laughs> um. I don't see a lot of sweatpants. Not that traditional kind of sweatpants. I don't see it. I go to the Y in the morning. I don't see it a lot. You think that's all uh, Sam Elliott's real hair? It looks good. It looks, it looks real. pretty good. It looks good. It? I think it is. I'd buy it. I think he must be training now. Getting ready to take on. I, I, well, he's pissed. He's lost his. Oh, see? snap. He lost his shit. Yeah. Never lose your shit. Is that one of the lines? I don't think so, but, <laughs> but I like I'm it. paraphrasing. You pulled a, a great line that doesn't exist in the movie. You taught me as much as I ever taught you. We're not even listening to the movie. We're literally reading lines. Yeah, it would probably be. I, I just don't believe in listening to the movie when you're doing a commentary track. It's I mean, too basically, you, it's too distracting. That is. Uh, come on, sir. Right. How gay is that? that is a, uh, this movie screams out for just a, a fireworks of, of jism, crisscrossing the screen, cobwebbing like spiderwebs. like retitle of Load House. <laughs> <laughs> and then back to fighting. What's in the background? Looks like something dead on the ground. I think it's a stick. Uh, or a big stick. It was a, a deer that throat. he ripped the throat out of as he's practicing for his next big move. Yeah, see, this is this is the part of the movie that this dude's way too hell bent on the guy across the lake. Is this where she lake. comes to say, like, come on, 
Like, this is where she comes to say, like, I'm going to be the last move. woman to wear a belt <laughs> before they go out of fashion. Yeah, wouldn't you get out of there? Like, you found each other and, you know. You the sex is hot. Sex is hot. <laughs> you might as well just get out of town. Can't do nothing about that, dude. But that's why he's a hero. He stands up for the... For the for the little guy, for all the little guys. Taking and taking until somebody takes. But for Christ's sakes, put a fucking shirt on. <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. He's mad at her. Why would you be mad He's at pissed. her? He's pissed. He's lost his shit. He's not gonna win. Or not is he like leading? that. No, if he's well, he's not packed or anything. You want to? It'd probably be easy to figure out. He just put it on the headphones. She's like, I don't want to fuck on the tin roof. Come on, it's hot. And our neighbor can see us. Oh, shit. What blew up? Maybe his car. I'm not sure. I think it's the dude's... Oh. It's the dude's house, isn't it? The dude whose yeah, barn he's living codger. in. So he's going to go pull the dude out he's of the He's going fire. in there. See, obviously, there's a reason why he wasn't afraid to, to have sex on that little you thing because he just door jumped door. over. He just jumped off of it. Yeah, well, uh, I'd why would be you be afraid? afraid? Okay, this dude sleeps in a in a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> what are those things called? The unitard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the whole place went up. It's one of those movies where it's like there's always multiple charges. Yeah, what do you think that's supposed to represent? I think it's supposed to represent. Um, because they're not saying like they laid multiple charges in the house. I think what they someone lit a, in the reality of the movie, somebody lit a fire, uh -huh. or, although it was obviously explosive. But it's hitting things like the gas heater or the, or fucking something. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Beyond the gas heater, <laughs> something else. The fridge. Yeah, maybe it hits a little freon. Uh, I mean, I guess if it hit the water heater, nothing would blow up. Uh, this, oh, he's, oh, that he's, is the height of villainy right there. <laughs> when you're on a fucking dirt bike? Yeah. When I, when not only are you on a fucking dirt bike, but you're laughing about what you've just done. Go on, rip that lightning bolt out of his ear. He's Do it up, Sway's dog. <gasps> this is where, isn't this where it's They just tumble like, like lovers, sir. This is where they fight, and I, th I believe this is where the... Uh, he rips his, he's going to he rip, rip his, his heart out? He's, no, he rips his neck open. He grabs his thorax and shit like that. Once again, uh, maybe it's just us, maybe, or maybe it's because we're guys, but we've we fall prey to the action film. Like we suddenly stop we're talking and start watching it. We want to see what's going to happen. We want to see the moves. Do you think, like somewhere deep in our subconscious, we're cataloging moves in case we ever get into a situation like this, where some dude blows up your neighbor's house and you can tackle him? He's on him. a dirt bike, and I'm like, I got to figure out what to do. Oh. Um, I don't know if that's it. I tell you, man, one punch from either of these dudes, I'd be dead. I, there's no way on earth that I would feel like I, I'm going to give back. I would be a dead man. That's why I go to the gym. I train on running very quickly. <laughs> Get it's speed more about on your escape. side. Yeah, I have movie fights, I watch them. I'm like, oh, God, I wouldn't be able to take one of those punches. And they never cry. Nobody ever goes, ow. <laughs> cry. I would cry. I swear to God, you hit me that hard. I'd be well, like, most people oh, in the fuck did you do that for? <laughs> well, that would just sort of, you know, if you put that in the context. Oh, hit by a log. He was grabbing him by his hair, man. See, I guess it all is fair when you're fighting. Like, sometimes, like this dude's Dirty. doing all smooth and shit, but, like, I guess if you can grab a dude by, his, by the top of his mullet and yank, that's cool. Well, all, it's all, all bets are off when you're in this kind of fight. A fight of rage. See, he's losing. Because he's got to come back. Watch, here it comes. He's going to grab it. He's going to go for the throat. It's a move that Dalton swore he would never... Look at it. He's, it's like he's a little raccoon, a reverse raccoon. See how the white <laughs> around his eyes? <laughs> here it comes, sir. Oh. That's the one move you gotta learn is just kick somebody in the balls. Apparently, every that's a real movie move too. But see, even in the movies, like these guys in real life, How this, this doesn't dude exist. Fighting in jeans that tight. It's the '80s, man. That's how they trained. Oh, now he's gonna rip the throat because she's got to see it. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's gonna got pull a, a gun. gun. So he's justified in homicide. Here we go. Oh. Skaga! Ripped his goddamn throat out, sir. And kicked him into the fucking lake. 
Just insult to injury. Put them in Proving the water. Proving further that if Dalton and Mr. T walked into a bar, the bar would be instantly destroyed as that level of awesome cannot be contained in one building. I think you'd go on record as saying, you don't even need Mr. T. After a fight scene like that, Dalton can't be contained by a building. Killing another guy is not necessarily sexy to a doctor. No, no. Well, you know, she took the Hippocratic Oath. She's promised to save lives. But it's like, hey, he had a gun, bitch. Fuck. Yeah, but he's supposed to be able to control his, his anger more. Well, just because the dude took a few philosophy courses because he got a doctorate? Doctorate in pain. He obviously doesn't care that she's not going to fuck him anymore now. <laughs> He's so hell-bent for leather against uh, Ben Gazzara's character. He doesn't care. Yeah, set him to drift in the angriest way you can. Now, why stop there? Why not just cross the river and kill Ben Gazzara at you're that in point? Because obviously rage. he's by himself. Like, there's right. nobody watching. He's the out on the deck. You're in a berserker rage. Like, just get on that guy's back and float him across the river. <laughs> that and would then... be, oh, that would, put, that would lift this movie into the absolute fucking premiere position of cheese cult classic. If they used a body if he as used a raft. a dead body as a raft, paddled over to Ben Gazzara, <laughs> who just stood there on his porch watching in disbelief the whole time, and then climbed up and took his throat out too you know we should probably google search uh dalton getting his ass kicked but i think we will get zero results <laughs> because it just doesn't happen see why on the dude how come ben Gazzara's character doesn't just blow up the fucking bar like why blow up red's house i guess he just wants to fuck with patrick swayze in a big bad he's way. a sadist but why not blow up the bar? I mean, it's one thing to have your girlfriend come in and take her blouse off and then throw a chair at the glasses, but... It's like a cat playing with a mouse. He's trying to show his power. Hmm. If you distribute... If you distribute the, the that kind of thing, then it then it makes you even more powerful. It's like, I can fuck you up at any time, but I, I don't want to yet because I enjoy fucking with you too much. Do you think he still believes it at this point? Or? Look at him. He's flipping a coin. He's I mean, I don't know nefarious. what he's deciding, yeah. He's trying to figure out whether he wants Chinese yeah. or, or a pizza for lunch. Um, do you think the dude is that uh, stupid? Like, after you see um, Dalton rip a dude's throat out, wouldn't you be like, I ain't going to fuck with this dude. This dude is fucking nuts. Well, I assume that, you know, he is packing heat at that point. Um, yeah, but regardless, it's like, wouldn't you stop throwing gasoline on the fire? And just end it? And just be like, you know what? I'm Are you would back away? Yeah, I would totally back away. I so would just be the like, the movie for you. <laughs> wouldn't it be, what a great ending <laughs> like, to a movie. Just it's like, to Ben Gazzara on his porch, yeah, he's, he's like, you like, win. <laughs> it's like that moment in, uh, The Aviator, where Alec Baldwin's he's character like, finally loses, and he goes, fuck. <laughs> That's what I would do. I would just kind of back away and be like, I'm not going to fuck with this pilgrim anymore. He's fucking psychotic. He ripped a man's throat out. That would be it. And walked away from Kelly Lynch at the same time. He's oh, he bloodthirsty. Put, he put bloodthirst over pussy, and that in your mind is sort of like... Proving, once again, that this movie is insanely gay at its heart. <laughs> Dude will walk away from a gorgeous, good-looking woman who really seems to like him and will have sex with him anywhere he wants. To tussle with some dude on the lake shore. On the beach. Yeah, to get real physical and play grab ass with some fucking psycho with a lightning bolt earring and a, and a real big mullet. He's a different breed. I'm going to say he's a different breed of cat than me and you. Uh-oh. This is a dude in this movie who was a professional wrestler. A guy named Terry Funk. Was he the guy with the, 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 he was one of the bouncers at the beginning? I believe so. I think, I think I can pretty much tell you who he was. Um... No, I can't, <laughs> unfortunately. But Terry Funk is a professional wrestler, and his dad, Dory Funk, was also a grappler, as they say, from 1940 to 1970. Wow. But this dude, Terry Funk, he's, uh, at age 56, he captured the WCW Hardcore Championship in a match against Norman Smiley at the Spring Stampede uh, on April 16, 2000. I mean, this is, this is one of the, his trademark move, the spinning toehold and the chicken punch. Chicken Punch is not. I don't know if I would. I would rename it. Um, he's been. He's known for retiring from wrestling only to return, and he's also a cousin of actor Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, really? Wow. But that's one of the secret charms of this movie, right? Is is having a dude who's a wrestler in the cast? Because again, the movie's very popular on TBS, Yo. TNT, Wait, and and up. soon, or if not already, the country music uh, station, country music television, CMT. So you're appealing to that audience. 
Oh, shit. It was Tails. That's why I was flipping the coin. It had nothing to do with lunch it whatsoever. It wasn't a lunch thing. It was God. all about killing Sam Elliott. What a prick. Yeah, he's got to go down at this point. If you didn't like him before, mm-hmm. you you have to not like him now. If you're somewhere in that. I think can... it's rather strange that Patrick Swayze had to turn him over to discover he was dead. Like, he saw the dude laying on the bar well, he and he was, think he two got, things about He got beat up. He yeah, why not go lay on the stage? Nap. Like, you have to climb up onto the bar. He's a bouncer. Yeah, but still, you're in pain. You don't want to have to move any many further than you're moving. You think it's that tough to pull a knife out of somebody? I think it was hard. I think it was more emotionally difficult for him. Is that what the that performance was about? Yeah, I don't think it was a physical. <laughs> it wasn't a sword in the stone kind of no. thing where he's like, if I can draw fucking, this blade from his It wasn't cake. Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> They are actually, um... They're ready, sir. They're, they know he's coming. See, they got guns. Yeah. This dude's That's itching his back with a scared. shotgun. John Doe is itching his back with a shotgun. That, I mean, if I was a person of the, from the South or something, I'd be like, wow. They're just flat out calling me a hasty. There's the dude, the wrestler is the guy with the white cowboy boots on. Right. <laughs> he was <laughs> happy to fire that. Action. I fired a gun once his or leg twice, like Elvis. and it's... It's tough, man. There's a lot of throw to it. On a shotgun? Yeah. Like a 12 gauge? Yes. yes. Um, even a handgun, there's a lot of kick to it. Yeah. Like in movies, they make it seem so easy to fire a gun. And it really, uh, it's not, it takes a level of kind of concentration in terms of like holding the gun steady and whatnot. Yes. Like all those movies, the gang movies where they hold the gun on the side and whatnot. Very difficult to aim. Tough to pull that off. Tough to aim and tough to just, you, you're constantly getting the recoil, the kickback. <laughs> So funny that they never came up with the idea that he actually might not be in the car. <laughs> I know, and they actually opened the door of the flaming, burning car to be like, let's get him. Find that prick. They are actually... That might be the Blade Master right there. I'm not sure. Can't say for sure which one. I mean, I know the dude's name was was uh, what we said it oh, was before. Somebody's down. The wrestler's down. They're all going down, sir. I don't know if, if you're aware of it, but they're all going down. They, um, speaking of the the popularity of the film, there is actually a, I believe, I believe it's going straight to video, but there is a sequel to Roadhouse. Get out of here. There is. What's it called? Roadhouse 2. Last, Last Call. Call. Yeah. Could have picked that one. Wow. When's that come out? Um, I think I think it comes out this year. I think we can look. For, oh, it comes. People out, can look for I, it this year. I bet year. you it comes out same time on DVD as this new Roadhouse DVD comes out. So you could literally watch one and then the other. Once you're done with this, you can go to the other. Is Swayze in it? Swayze dog can't I, be in it. I would have heard about that. No, there is no Swayze in it. I don't know if there's necessarily anybody from the original cast. Tough to reassemble that cast, man. That's, That's a once in a lifetime thing. This movie made uh, as much as Dogman, Jay, and Silent Bob Strike Back, but in 1989 dollars. So adjusted grosses, it definitely earned more than than our two movies did. Our two top grocers. Oh. oh. Yeah. It, there he goes. This is kind of like a high noonish kind of thing, except he's got to kill a bunch of people instead of one. It's a modern day western. Uh, you know who Mike Not Nelson the only is? One. No. Mike Nelson is one of the dudes who did Mystery Science Theater. Not the original dude. He's the dude that came way later. Mm-hmm. Um, not a, not Joel. Some people are Joel fans. Some people are Mike Nelson fans. Gotcha. I like Joel. Um, he wrote a book called Mike Nelson's Movie Mega Cheese. Yeah. And he named Roadhouse as the cheesiest. When it comes to the cheesiest movie of all of all time, Roadhouse, the 1989 beat 'em up bouncer tale starring Patrick Swayze tops Mike Nelson's list. Nelson continually cites Roadhouse in his book, Mike's, Mike Nelson's Movie Mega Cheese, as the touchstone of cheese. He says, I can't define why it's good. It takes itself very seriously. At least all the actors weren't in on the joke, unless they were pulling off a really, really good joke. It's unbelievable the archetypes they have in place, and they play it dead straight. So, he high honor, I guess, to some degree. You know, if you're going to do anything, you need to... I mean, he achieved some... That was strange. That he attacked the dude with the bear? Or that the guy was actually scared, scared of the of bear? <laughs> He's one... Well, that's... They're always playing, like, uh, fat dudes as scared and superstitious and easily tricked. 
<laughs> like you know, the more you eat, the more fucking. Pretty much, you. But the more you eat, you the more sense of sense of uh, self and sensibility you lose altogether. <laughs> You can't lose weight, but you lose brain power. As you see, like, a bear that's clearly <laughs> not <dead>. living <laughs> stuff. They've probably seen around this dude's house many times coming at you, and you actually get afraid. I don't think it would kill him either. I don't know if he's dead. I personally think. Don't don't fat guys, like, faint. And then they're... In movies, that's another fat stereotype is that they pass out of fear. Like, oh, that kind of thing. Happens to me all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've passed out. <laughs> just when, like... <laughs> when the going gets rough, I just... I immediately turn myself off. When your daughter's off. stuffed animals start moving towards you. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> Collapse Fire on. shots into I've it. I've broken my daughter's leg like, three times, collapsing <laughs> on her out of fear when she's come at me with a stuffed animal. This movie came out in May, uh, May 19th, 1989. So this was like a beginning of the summer movie. They had high hopes mm -hmm. for this motherfucker. God damn, he killed a lot of animals. Yeah, uh, Ben Gazzara's character has a lot of hate for the animal Anything. kingdom. He just, he's a trophy collector. That's why he wanted uh, Kelly Lynch. <laughs> oh, he's not there. Uh, but he's he on is the on the other side. And now how come he didn't see him coming around? You know, because he shuffled past the buffalo that quick? Look at all Look the at lemurs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that he spear, killed a man? He killed a friggin' family of lemurs. That spear soared through the air like it was on a string. It might have been. Um, come on, dude. Like, don't even pretend like this dude could get the better of you for two seconds. He shot him, though. He's off kilter. He's got some... See? Yeah. But come on. There's got to be something. How how do you think he puts him away? He's got to take him down with the, with the spearhead. Ripping his throat out has been done, so he won't be doing that. He's got to use the spear. Oh, my knee. The backside of my <laughs> knee. What is that called, the backside of the knee? Is there a clinical term for it? Um, Just the know. back of the knee? Back of the knee. This uh, film was nominated for a shitload of Razzie Awards in 1989, including Worst Actor Patrick Swayze, but it was a double nod because he also got nominated. Wait, he's about to do the... Worst, he's not going to do the throat thing. He's thinking better. Yeah, because uh, Kelly Lynch was all against it. Next of Kin and and uh, and Roadhouse got him nominated for uh, Worst Actor, Razzie. Rowdy Harrington got uh, nominated for Worst Director, uh, Razzie, which I totally disagree with. This movie, it's well made. Like, it's not like the movie's not well made. Oh, see, this is where Ben Gazzara went wrong. He, he looks away because he's looking for something to kill Dalton with. No. Oh, don't do it. It's over! <laughs> Who killed him? Red. Red. You fucked up my auto store parts. Oh, the whole town's going to kill him. This is why this, this is movie like a is Western. this movie's based on a true story. Um, I this read. part right here. This part, yeah, <laughs> this just one, this part. Right. It was a story. Um, it's a true story of a guy who was um, a uh, um, somebody that the town didn't like. Mm -hmm. See, the fat guy is alive. Yeah, he's um, alive, but he's not going to do anything. See, the fat guy could take them all out. Their backs are turned. He but what does he do? Runs boss. like a chicken. Roadhouse is said to be based on a an actual case in Missouri where the local bad guy, universally hated by everyone in town, was murdered in broad daylight, and no one in town seems to have seen a thing. That was from Roger Ebert's review. Roger Ebert said, The guiding spirit of Roadhouse can be glimpsed in one particular scene, which is set in the trophy room of, of an evil sadist who holds a helpless town in his iron grasp. His hunting trophies include not only the usual deer and elk and antelopes, but also orangutans, llamas, and a matched set of tropical monkeys. The guy went hunting in a zoo. <laughs> so the whole town kills him, and Dalton doesn't have to do it. The town rises up and finds the courage they couldn't find before, inspired by... Dalton. We are expected to believe that the sadists financed these hunting expeditions by shaking down the businessmen in a town that on the visible evidence contains a bar, a general <laughs> store, and a Ford dealership and two residences. <laughs> they just cut to the monkeys. <laughs> I didn't know why they did. <laughs> the cutaway shot? They cut to the See, monkeys. See, that movie's got a sense of humor to itself. That's the thing that people don't appreciate. I'm scared that we're going to repeat ourselves when I won't. Um... Dalton doesn't churn butter, sir. He roundhouse kicks the cows and the butter comes straight out. In the Bible. Yeah. Jesus turned water into wine. 
But then Dalton turned that wine into beer. <laughs> <laughs> a handicapped parking sign does not signify that this spot is for handicapped people. It is actually, in fact, a warning that the spot belongs to Dalton and that you will be handicapped if you park there. Are they naked again? He was totally nude there. I Did bet you, you if you... I bet you if you... I mean, if you frame by Look frame, you're either going to see a damn... 